as we see the customer experience, specifically in travel and hospitality, will be structured around the experience of the first time customers, the repeat customers, what happens after the purchase and the role of technology and innovation in this process. So that brings me to our first theme, which is the first time customer. And uh, obviously with um, Inspirato and the parking spot and James, what, what are you observing from the industry? There's different types of approaches and the different level of abstraction or the le different level of uh, hand-holding or interactional service that customers require based on the uh, the type of the purchase that they're doing, their demographic. Um, so I'd like to start with you, Sam, to uh, talk about the customer journey and the type of customers that you have and what the first purchase looks like uh, with Inspirado. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Um, so, you know, with, with our business, um, in terms of kind of how the, the conversation starts and the sort of first interactions that we have with prospective customers, um, you know, like many com companies, we are, you know, constantly looking at and evolving our, our kind of advertising campaigns and strategy to reach the, the core folks in our demographic, which, you know, is, is, is folks that are, are more high net worth individuals, you know, that are, that have, you know, sort of the, the, the travel budgets on the leisure side that, you know, you know, it aligns with sort of, um, you know, our offering. And so that's, that's really where, you know, it's, it, it, it kind of starts in terms of ultimately getting, um, you know, reaching people in those demographics and, and driving them and giving getting attention to Inspirato, who we are, the, the value proposition we have, the differentiators that we think we, we have in the, in the marketplace so that we can ultimately get to the point where we're having a conversation with that protect, uh, potential prospect and our, our very talented sales organization to, to really be able to walk through kind of the offerings that Inspirato has, why we think, again, we're different and why we, you know, have invested so much time, energy and effort into this um, experience for our prospects. So it, it is a, a multi-step process and so um, slightly different than maybe some, you know, fully, you know, um, kind of, you um, self-service models from a sales perspective, we, we do want to spend time with our prospects. We want to kind of walk them through not what we think, but also connect them with, with folks that are already have, in, you know, experienced the Inspirato and what we have to offer. And so we can really help guide uh, the customer through that buying decision that ultimately leads to that first transaction that you're talking about, Alex, where, you know, the transaction is sort of the logistical aspect of it. We, we make that as seamless and easily easy as possible. And once, once that happens, then, you know, our, our, you know, our intent is to get, you know, the, the customer then kind of fully uh, engulfed into the Inspirato experience, understand kind of, again, what we offer. And so that we can really get them excited about ultimately planning and booking their first trip. And, and would it be right to say that the this experience happens for a variety of channels? Uh, with uh, you, uh, obviously, you have your website, you you have your uh, team that from which people can inter interact via phone call or uh, email. Uh, how 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 is this communication handled? I'm assuming there's more than one uh, conversation that uh, positions your guests for success of using Inspirato. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Alex. It's a great question. I'd say, you know, it's our intention to, to meet, you know, whether it's a prospect or a customer, you know, where they're most comfortable, right? And so we we have a, a, a lot of different ways in which we can be communicating and interacting with our customer, whether it's, you know, if it's if you want to talk to somebody on the phone, some people still like doing that. Um, so we, we make sure we can do that or, or you know, our, our sales team is is always uh, accessible. Um, and uh, we really, um, from kind of that first touch point, we want to make it as personalized as possible. So Alex, if you're considering, you know, um, you know, joining Inspirato, you know, we're, we're going to want to be talking with you and we're going to make sure that however you want to interact with us, we can, we can facilitate that. So whether that's on the phone, whether that's via text, whether that's email, or it's a combination of it, or maybe even, you know, connecting you with like a local event that we might be having in the Dallas area, which we do that. Um, so you can kind of see firsthand and experience Inspirato and connect with other people. So, um, you know, we really try and provide um, sort of multi-channel um, kind of communications around, you know, 
really introducing and educating, you know, our, pro our prospects around Inspirato so that once you make that decision, you're very comfortable with kind of what you're, what you're really investing in, in terms of that, again, going back to our mission statement around that level of service and certainty that we will be providing from that point forward. This is great. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Ron, can you talk about how uh, the first time purchase happens with the parking spot? Sure, sure. <clears throat> so uh, we've the the best experience that we provide our customers is really through the loyalty program. Um, you know, going back to James' point of personalization, it's very key in our business, especially coming back to the two different buckets of you know user categories that we have or customer categories that we have. Um, but we've optimized our website over the years and our digital platforms for that matter. So app and website to um, make it very, very easy for the customer to sign up uh, during the reservations flow or booking flow. Um, you know, it's a step along the way um, that we can enter them into the loyalty program uh, because then their uh, experience at the property and when they're pulling in and the transactional experience is a lot more seamless. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about frictionless earlier and they literally just have to use one QR code and they're, everything is stored with that account. Um, we've also um, did a big push with our loyalty program on the website um, to make it much easier to manage your account. Um, we've also in introduced a tiered program. Um, so uh, repeat customers and uh, customers who part with us often. Um, you know, they can get into a higher tier, which actually gives them better perks. Um, we've got a, you know, a standard gold and platinum level. Um, and the platinum level actually gets uh, some of our free uh, or free upgrades to some of our uh, best services, like a uh, premium parking at some of our properties. Um, so getting them into that loyalty program is really probably the most important. Um, and also the uh, revenue management system that we've uh, developed over the years of, you know, using our forecasts and uh, reservations and um, demand, our forecast of demand, uh, we can provide the best price to the customers on our website. Um, and that's typically through the pay now reservations, um, but pay later also gets, um, you know, discounts as well. And then obviously people in our executive program, the business side, um, we usually have an agreement with their companies to make us the preferred parking vendor um, and provide them with a discount in order to do so. But they also earn points um, as they spend as well. Um, so yes, over the past couple of years, we've done a big push towards eliminating friction on all fronts, um, you know, at our properties, on our digital products. Um, and quite frankly, in our operational products as well, um, you know, we have a, a pretty complex shuttle tracker that um, our customers and employees all use. Um, our customers can see where their shuttles are. They can request a pickup. Um, so the first the first time experience really is uh, unique for the customer. And I think that that's what keeps them coming back um, because of the amount of technology we put in. Thank you, Ron. I think it also helps that uh, your shuttles are very recognizable at the airports. I know every time I land at DFW, I, I usually see a parking spot uh, shuttle and same with the other airports. Uh, I'm sure you uh, see multiple in that market, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, James, um, anything to add on this topic of first time purchases, making it frictionless, making it easier for the customers to get familiar with the new brand? Yeah, I mean, I'll just make a couple of quick points. And I think firstly, and the point's been made in, in, in the industry before, but there is a war on for that first customer purchase, right? You know, you, you'd be very lucky to for customers to be forced to book with you, whether you're an airline, vacation rental, hotel company, parking space. You know, so that direct booking experience has got to be the heart of your commercial strategy. And obviously you're talking about a world of content, but you're also talking about Look, what is it that the Airbnbs and Expedias do so well to make sure that customers, once they've once they've made their choice, are are hooked and then they're they're booked and they're confirmed, they're, they feel confident in in one or two clicks. And that for me is really is really the heart of everyone's kind of kind of commercial commercial plan. My my vision for the industry is absolutely someone should be able to book their whole trip like that, you know, from airline to hotel to parking spot and then sign up for an Inspirato subscription off the back of it. You know, we we need to start thinking about these kind of super apps but I, I know it's definitely a vision that, that, that a few years away I, I think one organization that um uh, you know 
it, it is a strike partner, but but that does it really well is, is Trip Actions. So you know, a, a disruptive kind of travel management company in, in the business travel space, um, and they they are really smart the way they work. So they 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 provide corporates with virtual cards. So that means you can just go onto their app and straight away you can just book your you know your flight, your hotel. And it all um, completely bypasses the traveler and it all gets dealt with by your travel department and your finance teams. It's just it's just really slick. Um, if you are booking hotels, what they've done is they've aggregated all the old school kind of business travel content from kind of the GDSs. But they've complemented it with all the OTA content. You are probably going to go and check anyway as a traveler like your Expedia's and, and, your, and your booking dot coms, which is neat. And if you want to pay at the hotel, well, you know, that that kind of virtual card model doesn't work so you can actually just load up your own card it could be a personal card could be a corporate card and i think that's 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 pretty cool as well so i think we're kind of you can see glimmers of hope where you can have one system with all the content multiple payment options um so i, I can see how we're getting there but i think it's a, it's a long journey for the industry that's going to involve much deeper partnerships you know much more um kind of digital thinking around how customers really really want to book um so yeah it, it's it's an exciting time um but yeah winning that first customer purchase yeah this is not a debate about whether you should book on OTAs or book direct. That's a whole different conversation. But everyone is out there to win that customer purchase. So you've got to ask yourself the question, you know, why, why me? Why, why should they book with me?